But now we want to talk about trails and circuits. So a trail is just a sequence of vertices with any two consecutive ones adjacent. The real distinction between a trail and a path is that you can repeat vertices. You can even repeat edges. It's just wandering around in a graph going from one vertex to a neighbor as long as you like. A trail is called a circuit if the last vertex is also adjacent to the first vertex. And again, most people when they're writing trails that are circuits do not write the first vertex at both the beginning and at the end. They just use the word circuit to remind you that this trail closes and comes back to where it starts. Don't mix up the words trail and path. Don't mix up circuit and cycle. On paths and cycles, the vertices have to be distinct. They do not have to be distinct on trails and circuits. But there's a notion of an Euler trail and an Euler circuit. And in Euler trails and Euler circuits, the edges are distinct. So a trail is called an Euler trail if for every edge there is a unique eye so that the edge E is the edge XI going to XI plus 1. So think about inspecting the integrity of the edges in a network. You want to start at some home base and then walk around in the network and physically walk on every edge in the network to check to see that it's functioning properly. But you don't want to walk on the same edge more than once because that's duplicated labor. So if you can do this, it's called an Euler trail. And you want to find out whether a graph has an Euler trail. And, and most people like to think in terms of the Euler circuit. Okay, and that's the, the more elegant of the two. And the two problems are completely equivalent. Let's take a, a little example, and then I'll take a bigger one. So here's one. Does this graph have an Euler trail? Let's try. Let me just start here as my x1 and see if I can find an Euler trail. These are your magazine problems where you're supposed to trace a figure without ever lifting your pen off the paper, but never repeating an edge. So I, I might go this one to this one, to that one, to that one, to that one, down to that one. Uh, I'm stuck. Uh, couldn't do it. All right, well, maybe I, w maybe I just was unlucky. And since I'm working with a colored pen, I got to start over. Hmm. So that one didn't work. That one won't work. That's the same. That one won't work. What about starting up here? But if you played with this for a, a minute or two, you you eventually come around and say, let's try here. Let's do this x1. Now, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, x7. No, I didn't walk on that edge. Hmm. That didn't work either. This one didn't work. That one didn't work. Hmm. 
So we like to develop a technique for deciding very quickly whether a graph has an Euler trail or, if required, an Euler circuit, and if it does, to produce it. Here's a, a larger example. Here's a graph, and I list below an Euler circuit. And in this case, I've done what I've said people don't do. I've listed the same vertex at the beginning and at the end. There's a reason why I'm temporarily taking that notational tactic. Just check it out. It's not obvious. And when you're doing this by hand on a piece of paper, real easy to make mistakes. One, eight, three, six, eight. See, you, you can visit the vertex eight as many times as you like. It's do you walk on every edge exactly once? OK, so given 90 more seconds, you convince yourself that that is indeed an Euler circuit. 